Good afternoon. Welcome to the 154th meeting of professional speakers where eloquence meets impact. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop their communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. Today, though we are less in number, but it doesn't mean that we are less in strength because number doesn't count the strength, number just counts the faces on the screen. But the strength we have that, may, that can prove to be multiplied by any number. So we shall be continuing with the meeting. Before that, I would like to say, tell a story. Was it train, train, train? Did, did my mobile phone ring? How come my managing director was calling me late evening last Monday? What did he tell me? Had our chairman, sir, planned to visit the incubator near ITO? When was he coming? Why was he coming next day evening? Was the notice time too short? What did my managing director ask me to be prepared with? Was I supposed to ensure that everything was in place? Must I inform all the startup companies to be present during our chairman sir's visit? Did I act promptly? Were the startup companies informed accordingly? How did I arrange a demonstration table? Did I buy it from the market? Did it cost me dearer due to emergent purchase? What did I take from the soul Almira in the incubator? Did I have enough goals and instruments? Did the demonstration table with tools and instruments make it presentable? How did I decorate the incubator? Did I install some indoor plants? Whom did I contact for the plants? Was it our regular gardener, Rajesh? How many plants did he install? Were they four in number? What were the plants? Were the snake plants, money plants, Christmas plant, and RCA palm plants? Are they good for health and environment? Did our chairman like the demonstration table? Did he like the plants? Was he satisfied after taking, after talking with the Sato companies? Did my managing director pat my back for the excellent arrangement and preparations? What do you think is the USP of this speech? You can tell me the answer while, when I will be giving my concluding remarks for the meeting. As for now, we are ready for the next thing in our meeting, which is, which is business section. As members already know, business section is to visit our short-term goals. We make our short-term goals so that we are able to work on them, on them and then uh, are able to reach out to meet our mid-term goals and then long-term goals. Because we cannot reach our long-term goals until and until until and unless we are able to work and we are able to succeed in our short-term goals. So I shall be showing the slides of the members and they shall be telling me about the uh, activities they performed towards completing their short-term goals. Anisha Gupta. 
Thank you, distinguished Toastmaster Raj Mehta. My short-term goals is our uh, twofold have been uh, for the month of July. The first one that has been continued from the previous month was reading a book 20 pages per day. And uh, this was not for uh, all the week, but I tried to keep it at least six days a week. So far in this week, I have covered it for three days a week due to other commitments. And on the respect of the second short-term goal, uh, which was streamlining my professional goals to align with six months term, I believe I have been able to uh, make a progress in terms of learning more about pathways as I'm new to it, and also aligning uh, club members' goals as the VP education. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Nisha. I, I understand that uh, Honey has not yet joined. Toastmaster Jolly Yeah. Hello, everyone. So my short-term goals are to increase my vocabulary by learning two new words every week at least and writing a professional blog, which I already have drafted. I'm going to publish that and improving my listening skills, which I have considerably improved since I joined professional speakers and using zero crutch words. Still, I am using few crutch words, which I would definitely like to improve on and uh, eliminate that from my normal speeches. In two minutes speech, I should use zero crutch words. That's my aim. Thank you, Toastmaster Jolly Sharma. Good evening, everyone. I am Mukesh Thakur, and my short-term goal was to record the one-minute recording for the 50 days. The goal is complete, and now it, I have turned it into five minutes impromptu speeches every day. So I have continued it, or, or you can say I have stretched it for 100 days. Now, after 50 days, I am continuing recording my speeches and watching it for uh, at least five minutes. And uh, I have completed uh, five days after 50 days, so total 55 days. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Raj Mehta. My short-term goals are three. First, to make one or two videos of five minutes. Last week, I made two uh, videos. These were around seven to eight minutes each and write 5,000 words in a week. I was not able to write much. I think I might have written around 500 words or so. And reading two pages of a book with correct pronunciation, uh, that, that is going on on regular basis. Thank you very much. Postmaster Sonika Ja. Hello, everyone. Uh, as my short term goal says, I have to read one book podcast every day. Last time, I think I said three days. Uh, it's still at three. I'm trying to make it to at least five out of seven days. So, yeah, I'm on it, on it. Thank you. Oh, Hani is also there. Hani, would you like to tell us about your progress of the short term goal? Uh, yes. So for my short term goal, that was to complete my HPL and DTM. Uh, yes, I've completed my high performance leadership. Uh, last week only, I got the certification for the club, which is started now. So we are official Faridabad Gables Club. And with that, I complete my DTM. And that was my short term goal that I had defined with professional speakers last time. This time, I just updated my presentation saying that I'll be defining my next short-term goal by tomorrow evening. And I'll be sharing with all of you in the next meeting. Over you. to you, Mr. President. Thank you, Toastmaster Hani Khandoja. We have a guest today, uh, Toastmaster Jaskaran. May, okay, Jaskaran, welcome to the uh, meeting. And uh, now we shall proceed with the uh, normal agenda of the meeting, and uh, which is which is what? Freedom. Freedom, sorry. Freedom is celebration by Toastmaster Jolly Sharma. Jolly Sharma is a product manager by profession, a nature lover and a foodie by heart. She loves knowing about different people and exploring destinations and cultures. Toastmaster Jolly Sharma 
for for toastmaster jolly sharma toastmaster is a way of life each and every interaction she makes personal or professional she feels the impact of toastmaster everywhere with this i welcome toastmaster of the day toastmaster jolly sharma with the theme freedom a celebration over to toastmaster jolly sharma thank you dtm raj freedom whether you want the sandwiches or you want to have the sprouts you have to make the choice and probably parents are always there to tell you that yes you have to eat healthy so probably choose the sprouts that was my case till fifth standard when i was about to go in the sixth standard and i had this hard choice to make which subject to pick now should i choose advanced maths or should i choose geography till then whichever dress i wore probably the color was always decided by my mama wherever i have to go that was a choice made by my parents and i and i was a free child i never have to worry about anything over there in the world other than my dolls which one i want to whether i want or not once in a year or just my studies even friends were also very limited for me so this choice was a difficult choice probably you all might be wondering why is it difficult choice for a fifth standard girl the complexity for me at that point of time was the decision that i make would further impact my 10th grades and then my subsequent streams of study that i am going to take up and finally but whichever choice i make that will land up me with that streams of subjects in my higher studies also if i choose the humanities subject whether it is geography or history probably i have to choose the humanities stream if i choose the advanced maths then probably i will be the one lucky one at that small town girl to be choosing the science stream in the 11th and 12th and finally in the subsequent streams also that night was horrible for me my decent teacher and everyone they had faith on me that i would fare well if i choose advanced maths but i was worried because till fourth and fifth standard i used to struggle badly in maths i never had this confidence on me so and that night i literally cried and i prayed to god to give me strength enough to make the right choice finally i chose the advanced maths subject and after that it was all history soon i landed up choosing the bio subjects as well as the maths in my 11th and 12th and after that again graduation i did in my bio and finally i chose my career in computer science which again was a very unconventional based on the streams that i chose all this time i had been making unconventional choices and the choices that i made is what it made me today the person i am and i feel proud of all those unconventional choices but yes the freedom that my parents gave me to choose to make those choices these unconventional choices were also was also difficult for them especially in a small town where girls used to get married after or during the graduation they gave me the power to be there in delhi with my brother and pursue my higher studies if i wanted to do a job they gave me that freedom also go ahead and do it even if it is getting married to the person i chose so the first choice was by them but again the second choice they wanted that no this should not be the person but still i stick to that no i am going to marry this person only and then they agreed to that so my friends i just want to tell you that with all these choices that 
we are able to make freely we also have to land up with huge responsibility in life and freedom is something which is not only with the choices that it has it comes up there are three basic types of freedom that i have come across in my life one is the psychological or mental second is the ethical or the moral freedom and third is definitely the social or the political freedom i am going to talk about each one of them gradually in the in the sections or between the army as our meeting is going to progress let me quickly now introduce you to the uh, grammarian of the day who is uh, dtm uh, mukesh thakur and mukesh i would request you to present the word of the day for the meeting today thank you very much toast master of the day i would like to present the word of the day for that uh, i would just disappear and you can see my virtual background the word of the day is cart blanche that means complete freedom or full discretionary power uh, for example i have today cart blanche to analyze everything that you are uttering today in this meeting and give a report on the, on this i would request all of you to use cart blanche uh, uh, throughout the meeting in french it is uh, pronounced as cart blanche in india and in english we pronounce it cart blanche back to the toast master of the day thank you uh, thank you mukesh and as i said that the first let's talk about the first freedom that is the psychological or the mental freedom what is this this is something when we are able to detach ourselves from all the external labels or make choices for ourselves the choice that i made is to choose the stream of subject that i wanted to choose the career probably to choose the dress probably to choose the partner of my life so when we start you know detaching ourselves from all those emotions or deals or definitions or the standards probably with which we have grown up or we have learned while growing up that is where our psychological or mental freedom comes into picture and we will or maybe one each one of you might have witnessed it during while the age you were growing up or maybe when your children are growing up when they are kids you definitely you have to guide them or give them the choices probably they go by your choices as well but as they start growing up they seek more and more mental freedom or psychological freedom which is very much essential for them to grow as a person to grow as an individual otherwise if we do not get this mental or psychological freedom we often tend to become depressed we there is a case of suicides also that we often see right it is because we are not able to make our own choices and then there are few other things that i witnessed during uh by my journey of growing up i further talk about it also the problems that i faced or i am still facing and the solutions that i have gradually learned because freedom does not mean that it is only the your choices but your choices should be such that it does not impact others it does not impact others mental well being also you have to respect those boundaries also so gradually i'll share more about that let's quickly go towards the next part of our meeting that is the speeches section here at professional speakers we have the prepared speeches segment now wherein we have today three speakers very renowned speakers with us who are going to present the prepared speeches the first speaker is jaskaran he is a toast master and an immediate past president of faridabad orators toast master club jaskaran singh is today with us he is a software engineer by profession a comedian by depression 
and he is going to basically present his level one project number two speech today. The speech title is the Kargil Vijay Divas, and it is from Dynamic Leadership Path. So here you go, Jaskaran, the Kargil Vijay Divas, the Kargil Vijay Divas, Jaskaran. 26 July 1999, India celebrated the Kargil Vijay Divas. Tomorrow is the date. Tomorrow, India will celebrate its Kargil Vijay Divas again, like every other year. Why did we fight the Kargil War? Why did that happen? Why did we have to take those soldiers out of our peaks? Those Pakistani soldiers were thrown away inch by inch. Why did that war happen? Every year, every year, just like in the year 1998, both the countries used to vacate their peaks because of the harsh winters. This year, in the year 1998, Pakistan did not vacate their peaks. India did, as per the agreement. Pakistan took advantage of the situation and occupied the peaks of India. It did not want to leave them. India requested the Pakistanis, just like any other diplomatic nation, remove your soldiers and give our peaks back. But the problem was the soldiers on those peaks were not wearing the uniform of Pakistan. They were wearing kurta pajama because they were posing as terrorist separatist forces. They said they're not wearing our uniform. They're not our soldiers. They were not ready to retreat. India went further for talks and diplomacy, just like every other person has ever done in the history. In fact, Lord Krishna went to Duryodhan for a truce and for diplomacy. That is one thing that we always have to do. But Pakistan was a Duryodhan of the modern time. They did not move an inch because they were saying that they are not our soldiers. India decided to attack Pakistan with full swing. But when we went for attack and when we went for reconnaissance mission, a patrol party from India went to Pakistan to check the situation on ground. And let me tell you, the result was really, really cruel. 26 soldiers of the Indian army were returned back with mutilated bodies. Their eardrums were pierced. Their eyeballs were removed. Almost all the bones in their body were broken. Almost all their part, body parts were covered with cigarette wounds. 21 days of torture. That was what happened in the initial days. India was not actually ready for the war because of the tough terrain, because of harsh winters and acclimatization, which is really important to fight in the high altitude warfare. When you fight in the high altitudes, your lungs have to be accustomed to the environment. We could not do that, but we still had to fight. Indian soldiers started crawling upwards. Yes, they had to crawl because they did not even know the position of the enemy. The death ratio was one is to seven. If one of the Pakistani soldiers die, seven of the Indian soldiers will have to give up their life. Tough situation, but still we had to proceed. A lot of men of the 18 Grenadiers and the 8th Sikh Regiment gave up their lives initially. But then we got the artillery support. Bofors, yes. We all have heard of the Bofors scam. I'm going to tell you the real story about the artillery guns, Bofors, what they were capable of. Bofors was capable of firing from 40 kilometers away from those peaks. Those guns could get the exact coordinates of where to fire. Our soldiers crawled on the peaks. They went very close to the enemy and gave the exact coordinates where the Bofors have to fire. Bofors kept firing and eliminating those Pakistani soldiers. The Pakistanis could not handle that where these artillery shells are coming from because they were 40 kilometers away from that particular place. They were coming from the sky. Indian soldiers were magicians. They slowly took the Pakistani soldiers out of their way. A lot of casualties happened in that time. A lot of men died because of the harsh winters, because of the uneasy area, and we could not locate the enemy. Vikram Batra lost his life in the end. Our helicopters got crashed. 
Indian Army asked for satellite data from the Americans. Americans denied the satellite data. India did not have its own sophisticated satellites at that time the way it has today. But the thing is, we kept on fighting and we kept moving forward. As per the data, 527 Indian soldiers died in the Kargil War and 1353 were wounded. This is the official data, as they say, Sarkari Aankade Hamisha Galt Hote. The official figures and the government figures are always incorrect. A lot more men laid down their lives in the Kargil. You can still see the blood spots on the Kargil Hills, the Tiger Hill, the Tololing. And there were other several peaks which were named after their height, like 0 0.5 double three, 0 0.44590. All these peaks still have the blood spatters of the Indian soldiers. There was a time during the Kargil War where we did not have enough coffins to accommodate the bodies of the Indian soldiers. They just have to be, they just had to be wrapped in the Indian national flag and sent back home. After all this struggle, after all this problem, India recaptured its position. We won the Kargil War by eliminating all the Pakistani soldiers from those peaks. And we celebrated the Kargil Vijay Divas on 26 July, 1999. My point is not to tell you to join the army, to encourage your kids to join the army. No, that's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you in those harsh winters, in that tough terrain, in that unexplainable war where no one could have gone, no one could have tolerated the low oxygen levels, they kept on moving forward. We all have small battles in our lives. We will fall down when we try to proceed. We will stumble, we will fumble, but we have to keep moving forward because we will get our bofer someday to destroy our enemies, whether it's ego, it's anger, it's mental health issues, financial issues. We will be able to defeat all these things and move forward and celebrate our own Vijay Devas one day. Thank you. My name is Jaskaran Singh. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak over here. Cheers. Thank you, Jaskaran. That was a wonderful speech and it uh, revived the memories of the battle that we had fought to get in the India of freedom. And as we are heading towards the celebration of 75th year of India's freedom on 15th August 2021, I truly respectfully say not you so, to the all the Indian Army and everyone, even my brother himself, he's a part of Indian Army. So I truly resonate with the things that you have shared. So with this, let's take one minute of silence to provide the feedback to the speaker for his speech. Madam Toastmaster of the evening, one minute is up. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And with this beautiful story from Jaskaran, let's now move to the next speech of our meeting today. The next speaker for today is Hani Khanduja, DTM Hani Khanduja. So congratulations, Hani, on earning the DTM cap and uh, with this, uh, let's uh, hear who Hani is. 
Honey is an L&D professional who believes that every learning conversation should be fun and impactful. She leads the digital team engagement products and delivers learning session for corporates and educational institutions with Blue Sky Learning. A Toastmaster for a decade now, she is giving back to the community with her role as counselor of Faridabad Gable Club. This is a Toastmasters class for kids whose origination story again lies with Honey on it. She is the one who has initiated this. An aspiring storyteller, avid traveler, fitness enthusiast is always in quest of some new and exciting experiences. And recently she has gone back to reading books after a long pause. And her speech today is also about that. Today she is going to share the story of Brada. She is a beautiful Irish girl and her quest for knowledge. This book is written by Paulo Coelho. So let's hear from Honey, few of the experts from the book or what she is going to share today with in her speech about this beautiful girl. So over to you, honey. Brida went over to Lawrence. His eyes were shining and she felt how very proud he was of her and how much he loved her. They could grow together, create a new way of living, discover a whole universe that lay before them just waiting for people of courage like them. But there was another man too. While she was talking to Vika's teacher, she made her choice because that other man would be able to take her hand during difficult moments and lead her with experience and love through the dark night of faith. She would learn to love him and her love for him would be as great as her respect. They were both walking the same road to knowledge. And because of him, she had reached the point where she was now. With him, she would one day learn the tradition of the sun. Now she knew that she was a witch. She had learned the art of witchcraft over many centuries and was back where she should be. From that night on, wisdom and knowledge would be the most important things in her life. We can leave now, she said to Lawrence. He was gazing with admiration at this woman dressed all in black. Breda, however, knew that the Megas would be seeing her dress all in blue. She held out the bag containing her other clothes. You go ahead and see if you can get us a lift. I need to speak to someone. Lawrence took the bag but only went a little way towards the path through the forest. The ritual was over and they were back in the world of men with their love, their jealousies and their wars of contest. Fear had come back too. Prida was behaving oddly. He looked up at the sky, still full of low clouds. God was a god of the brave and he would understand him because the brave are those who make decisions despite their fear, who are tormented by the devil every step of the way and gripped by anxiety about their every action, wondering if they are right or wrong, and yet, nevertheless, they act. They do so because they believe in miracles, like the witches who had danced around the fire that night. God might be trying to return to him through that woman who was now walking away towards another man. If she left, perhaps God will leave forever. She was his opportunity because she knew that the best way to immerse oneself in God was through love. He did not want to lose the chance of getting her back. He took a deep breath, feeling the cold, pure air of the forest in his lungs and he made a sacred promise to himself. God was the God of the brave. Brida walked over to the Megas. They met by the fire. Words came only with difficulty. She was the one to break the silence. 
we are on the same path he nodded the magus so let us follow it together but you don't love me said the magus i do love you i don't yet know my love for you but i do love you you are my soulmate the magus still had a distant look look in his eyes he was thinking about the tradition of the sun and how one of the most important lessons of the tradition of the sun was love love was the only bridge between the visible and the invisible known to everyone it was the only effective language for translating the lesson that universe taught to human beings every day i'm not going anywhere brida said i'm staying with you your boyfriend is waiting replied the magus i will bless your love brida looked at him puzzled no one can possess a sunset like the one we saw that evening but magus said just as no one possess an afternoon of rain beating against the window or the serenity of a sleeping child or the magical moment when the waves break on the rocks no one can possess the beautiful things of the earth but we can know them and love them it is through such moments that god reveals himself to the mankind we are not masters of the sun or afternoon or the wave or even the vision of the god because we cannot possess ourselves the magus held out his hand to brida and gave her a flower when we were when we first met although it seemed to me that i have always known you because i can't remember the world before that i showed you the dark night i wanted to see how you would face up to your own limitations i knew that you were my soulmate and that you would teach me everything i needed to learn that is why god divided man and woman this is the very last chapter of the book breeda by polo coelho it's a beautiful story of a irish woman called breeda i deliberately did it in a podcast way because i wanted you to feel what went on when breeda became a witch she was accompanied by her boyfriend but she wanted to stay with her soulmate which was the magus the magus the guy who told her about the power of faith she wanted to learn magic she wanted to learn about the soulmate she was in the quest of knowledge and in that quest of the knowledge in that very book there are several characters that build the story so beautifully there was wicca the girl who was following the tradition of moon and that is where brida got to learn the witchcraft there was his, her boyfriend lauren then there was megas the guy who was the practitioner of the tradition of the sun and that is where the journey of brida starts this beautiful book very nicely in fine details touched the very intimate and very ritualistic themes of witchcraft spirituality magic incarnation soulmate you all know the author polo coelho he is a master storyteller the way he explains the different emotions the way he explains that how love is the way to reach god how love is liberty is something that was my personal take away from the book i got back to book reading after a really long time and this was the first book i picked up in 2021 this was definitely a beautiful delight and i would want you to explore it i am not very sure if this book is for everyone because this book calls for a lot of patience to understand all these elements i was very intrigued to learn about not about magic but about how the story of self discovery is being unfolded how we tend to find the soulmate which is a different concept altogether for which is you find a light on the on the top of the left shoulder we would never saw it we would never see it but yet this book was a delight 
And I would like to close it with one beautiful line from this book, and I hope you will be able to enjoy it on the video mode. This is what the Megha said to Brida. Then you came, and I understood all of this. You came to free me from the slavery I myself had created, to tell me that I was free to return to the world and to the things of world. I understood everything I needed to know, and I love you more than all the women I have ever known. I will always remember that love is liberty. That was a lesson it took me so many years to learn. That is the lesson that sent me to exile, and now. Set me free again, and Brida left Megas for her boyfriend. And that was a very touching moment when I saw and realized that love is truly liberty. Over to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, honey. It was a beautiful story that really touched us. And uh, let's take one minute to give feedback for honey's speech. Uh, yes, I'll just take quick 10 seconds to tell everyone that I would want you to write the feedback in the term that was it anyhow close to the book review. It was one of my first attempted book review and I want to continue as a practice for all my book reading now, all my books that I'm reading now. Uh, was it any way interesting to you to know more about the book? That would be my question. And yes, the first few minutes when I did it on a podcast mode that was completely deliberate I didn't want to be on the video I wanted to do it in on the voice mode so I would recommend I would look forward to your recommendations around that thank you Madam Host, one and a half minutes is up. Thank you, Madam Chaima. And with this, let's move to the next prepared speech of our meeting. And this is by our own Anisha Gupta. She is known for being the quiet one, which she usually is, but she has a lot of questions even during our meetings or offlines also. And C has moved from developing tech products to developing human capital. C works with the NGO Barefoot College International as a trainer for empowering rural educators. And C has recently joined the Toastmasters community again with the professional speakers after her prior experience as a competent communicator and advanced literacy branch. C is aspiring to become a strong storyteller and community enabler. You can find her practicing stillness of mind, movement of body, oneness with nature, or just hopping around looking for food. If not busy, lucid dreaming in her sleep. C has lots of stories to talk about from the rural spaces and she has moved across six cities. Today, she is going to present a speech on the, from the path, persuasive influence, from understanding your leadership style. And the level is two, and the project is understanding your leadership style. Her topic today is, conquer others or yourself. So Anisha Gupta, concur others or yourself. Concur others or yourself, Anisha Gupta. It is not others who we conquer. It is ourselves who we conquer, said Edmund Hillary. 
Edmund Hillary, as you know, the very famous mountaineer. Today, I'm talking about the leadership styles and not just leadership styles of everyone, but leadership styles that are my personal own. And when I took the Toastmasters Pathways Leadership Style Assessment under the project two, while I am on the path of persuasive influence, I noticed something which is very obvious to me and few things which were slightly shocking. Few things obvious that my friends would definitely agree. Not just my friends, but my colleagues, people I work with, people I socialize with would agree what kind of leader I am. Well, if you consider, if you have noticed that I have been with Teach for India, yes. And I have been at Barefoot College International telling you stories of my rural immersion, of the social sector that I have been so far and the, the exposure that I have got. You would understand that, okay, I could be a little altruistic. By altruistic, I mean having some high level of empathy. I could be a little dem democratic where I understand and take opinions from others. Well, when I took this leadership style assessment, I realized that there were different leadership styles, which were like different markings on a thermometer. Well, if I say I'm high on the temperature, I'm high on the temperature of democratic. Yes. And if I say low on the temperature, which was somewhat known to me, but someone also shocking was the fact that I uh, was the fact that I am slightly less authoritative. Yeah. Slightly less bureaucratic. Yeah. And if I talk about the scores, well, these are my scores, which clearly shows that on the authoritative style, I'm very low. On the pessimistic style, I'm very low. On the bureaucratic style, I'm low. But if I tell you that, okay, I perform my duties as a teacher, as a trainer, or as a coach, I am somewhere in the middle, in the thermometer, on the coaching style. Well, there are some benefits of being a democratic leader, and there are some disadvantages, just like everything else. When I came to De Barefoot College International, I realized a very different culture, something that has made me stay back for two years, something that has helped me gain a team of educators and manage and lead them. Well, not necessarily manage, because again, I'm a democratic leader. So I lead. And the advantages, advantages that I've seen so far of being a democratic leader is when I go, don't tell them what to do, but I ask them. Yes, the inquisitive one, but the very questionative one as well. So I not just pester people with my questions. I also pester people with my questions on what they want to do. Being a democratic leader tells me, it helps me to understand what other people need. A positive of being a democratic leader is that I ensure that there is a consensus of decision making. I motivate them because people don't want to be led, do they? Think for a thought. Do you want someone who's being pushy, who's pushing your buttons all the time, who's telling you something, do this, do this, being a mother or father? Oh, as mature adults, as team leaders, team people, as leaders ourselves, we want to do things on our own. But certainly, when it comes to working in teams, there is some kind of requirement to be led. And that's where my motivation style comes in, my coaching style comes in. But let's talk back to the point of being a democratic leader and the disadvantages of being a democratic leader. Well, the decision-making process is time consuming because I will go around everyone, hey, do you want to do this? Hey, do you agree? Do you agree? Give me a thumbs up if you agree. Give me a thumbs down if you don't agree. As a teacher, I've learned to do that all. 
that slows down the decision making process often ending up and not the best decision just like you would see in any kind of democracy india is a democracy largest democracy we are living in well let's go on the other side of the thermometer the down one below well if my assessment shows that i am not an authoritative leader i am not very surprised because i don't don't remind people of the rules and the procedures that we go through i find it good and that's the point where my empathetic kind my empathetic style goes high and that's how what has led me to understand what people need what society needs when i chose to be an educator when i chose to go into teach for india to understand and and work with children to understand the educational inequity that exists in india to understand our educational system and to empower the leaders for future i knew that my empathetic style empathetic style is going to help but does it help me right now well i'm not sure about that but something that i'm sure about is that i will continue to be a democratic leader well yes sometimes i need to be authoritative telling people what to do as the vp education over here i am sure i need to tell you what you want to do but i am also sure that you all know what you want to do because we don't conquer the world we conquer ourselves thank you for listening to me and back to you those master of the evening thank you anisha what a wonderful speech and let's take one minute of time to provide the feedback for the speaker Madam host i believe we are over with one minute thank you anisha so conquering ourselves or detaching ourselves from the situations or from the emotions or the definitions or the standards with which we have grown up that is the most difficult thing but that is the first step my dear friends towards achieving the psychological or mental freedom being an empathetic person and uh, i do not want to hurt people i do understand their needs so and also i am very proactive by nature so this traits of mine help me to do things for people early before the things are asked from me but then there is again a crust to it what i look for is always a validation a validation that yes i have done this and that is where the twist of the psychological or mental freedom comes for me i get crippled by the thought when i look for validation from people for who i have done something not every time you do everything your thoughts or your efforts are always acknowledged so i have gradually learned that instead 
of waiting for people to validate my things. I need to move away from this tendency. I have to basically do not transfer the responsibility of my happiness onto them. I just need to do things and move off. I should not be a consumer. I should rather become a doer. And when I say this, I should not wait for people to come or facilitate me to come up with the times. Though I am stating all this, but in my day-to-day -day life, it becomes really difficult, especially things I have been struggling right now. For example, I do my daily course and everything and my office work and all, and I'm so occupied that I hardly find myself for time for my health, doing some small exercises at home. When I introspect, I think I am acting more like a consumer. In fact, I am just transferring this responsibility on my immediate surroundings. Because of these reasons, I am not able to do this. I am just crippling my mental things. So this is not the way that we can achieve the mental freedom. Second thing is making excuses, as I said earlier. Usually proactive people are the ones who does the thing very nicely, but reactive ones are the people I have seen mostly. They love feeling hurt. They want to keep going with the tears and they love being in anger and they just do not want to trust on anyone. Even I have been through that journey also at times. It is easy to go into that mood and to be mentally crippled. Don't do that. This is the second thing that usually we have the tendency because that is the easier way out. Third is language. We, any type of self-talk that we do, right? That the circumstances are not favorable for me. We should not do this kind of self-talks. Instead, we should be thankful or we should have gratitude for all the privileges that we have. We should think them of as the assets for us, not something that is burden for us. If we start doing this kind of self-talks that yes, circumstances are privileged. For example, the COVID situation, it is a privilege for us. At least we are getting time to spend with the family to be at our home, to be at our own, not as a burden, then we will start being mentally free. And once we achieve this mental freedom, then only the second type of freedom, that is the ethical or moral comes into picture. And finally, we are able to contribute to the society, that is the social freedom. I'll talk more about that. Let's quickly move to our next section. That is a table topic session. And this will be conducted by Hani Khanducha, who is the table topic master today. And with this, I would request Hani to please take over us through the journey of table topics today. Okay, amazing, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much. Quickly jumping onto the stage, I would like to inform that you all know how we conduct the table topics, right? Uh, so one minute is the minimum, maximum is two minutes. Mukesh is nodding his head. He's going to be my first speaker because he has been silent in the meeting so far. So he will show us how to do table topics with a band. My approach of table topics is going to be very simple. I have got five topics only, and you can pick a number. It can be an image, it can be a topic that I can read from my notebook, but yes, I have got first five in the sequence, so I'm going to be fair and not going to rig anyone for the topic. Mukesh Thakur, you are my first speaker. Can we put him in the spotlight, please? And Mukesh, you can pick up any number from one to five. Five. Okay, amazing. So here you go, I'm going to share my screen. And this is my favorite for the day. What book has changed your life and how? What book has changed your life and how? Mukesh Thakur. It is really difficult to blame it on only one single book because there are many books 
that have changed my life uh, if i have to choose one book out of all of the books i would choose secret the secret written by ronda bryan until i have uh, uh, read this book i was uh, in a different uh, perspective i was not aware that everything in this universe is working through law of attraction when you will read this book you will find that everything is uh, Uh, written as supernatural you will uh, find that uh, whatever the author is writing it is uh, not relating to all of our days activity still when you relate to each and everything you will find every activity is just governed by the law of attraction and at the same time i had read, uh, read this, this book by sadguru mind is your business there was one sentence in that book everything that are uh, being uh, thrown to us in our life are just dumped on our mind and we are the consequences of everything that we have learned we have witnessed we have saw we have heard today and this was connecting with the book the secret the law of attraction whatever we are thinking are becoming our thought process whatever we are uh, having as our thought process are uh, becoming our words our actions and uh, when everything becomes our character it changes our uh, our destiny just like the movie or uh, just like the, the uh, book the alchemist the same author uh, of uh, that uh, honey was sharing a book with if you want something in your life the universe will conspire you to meet you with that person and this is really true i have seen it in our everyday life i have i am experiencing it every day life all you have to do as per the book the secret you have to ask believe and receive if you your intensity is right everything in this world is possible and that i am witnessing every day back to the table topics master amazing thank you so much to master mukesh thakur mind is your business so something that i am going to take away and ask believe and receive thank you for bringing this to light definitely there are so many books in the world and we can't read them all and that's what my question was that what is it that changed you we can probably get to know my next speaker is close master sonika jha sonika are you ready sorry because we are limited so i'm going to pick and the other ones can just speculate who are going to be the next so sonika uh, you can choose a number from 1 to 4 and i'll show you the topic uh, number 3 number 3 amazing so here you go uh, may i request the host to spotlight her Sonika, this one for you. My favorite, Calvin and Hobbes. Great experiences are even better when they are shared. What is one for you that you would like to share with professional speakers community? Great experiences are even better when they are shared. What is that one for you which you would like to share with our community? Sonika Jha. Thank you, DTM Honey. well who doesn't know that what toastmaster means to everyone we are here as storytellers and every time we are sharing something it could have been a great experience a lesson for our uh, in our lives any experience that changed our life which comes in the form of a story and yes we all are part of it and this is what we do at toastmasters the way we say that happiness shared when happiness is shared it grows similarly when experience experiences are shared they become better they become better in the way that you inspire other people to learn from your experiences for example i would like to quote here something the day i joined the day i joined toastmasters i met a lot of new people and they asked me sonika what do you do what inspired you to come to those master and what are your aspirations i told them about my background from where i come what i do and they learned a lot from my experience and what made me come to toastmasters and as i evolved as a toastmaster 
my experience as toastmaster grew and that helped more people to join toastmaster when i connected with them i thought i was creating a ripple effect through my positive experiences that was attracting more people to join toastmasters i believe that something great and worthwhile as an experience is good to share and spread the positivity as it goes miles and miles thank you so much thank you so much tonika can we have a huge round of applause for tonika ja uh, and definitely toastmaster is one experience that you would can definitely be very proud of sharing with everyone because you are creating some positive and very strong ripple effect in the world with that may i jump to my next table topic speaker toastmaster raj mehta are you ready would you like to spotlight yourself yeah and <laughs> okay so except number 3 and 5 you have got 1 2 and 4 to choose from what is your favorite four okay so four i have got a quote and you have to use it to share a story i'm going to share a quote a proverb kind of thing which we all would have heard and you have to share a story around that and here you do break a leg raj mehta dtm break a leg break a leg raj mehta over to you thank you table topic master the life is full of celebrations but sometimes the celebrations may make us to act some things which we are not expert at sometimes we may get offer of cycling fast which i might not be knowing how to cycle some other time i may get the offer of dancing because i have got some friends who are expert in dancing but i am not but thing is that if i do not do that act will i be able to stand in this society no i will have to learn many other things which i is sometimes i do not like and sometimes for in doing that i may be breaking my leg i know it is literal meaning which i am which i am using otherwise breaking a leg is like doing the dance like mad point is that for making celebrations for enjoying life we must learn we must learn some things which are must for our life we cannot live a life by which we are making others unhappy we have to ensure that everyone as many people are pleased with, uh, with us as possible though we cannot please everyone but our effort should be there that we should be able to take any action for making the society happy thank you very much okay thank you toastmaster raj mehta you have given a complete new meaning to what i actually throw to as a topic amazing can i request jolly sharma our toastmaster of the day so i have got two topics left and i have got three nominations so as how it is then i am going to call upon jolly so requesting the host to spotlight our team lead and you have only two number to choose from either one or two what would you like to do one one okay one is right here now that we are in the virtual world jolly what would you do if you could live anywhere in the world what would you do if you can live anywhere in the world jolly sharma very interesting topic virtually if i can live anywhere i would love to be in midst of nature nature can be anywhere any place but the one place which i definitely am looking forward to for few months now is kashmir this is one of the beautiful places that i have ever been so far and i am really looking forward and i want to go there and virtually if given a chance i would love to go there as already shared i have already shared this experience with all of you this is a place wherein i felt it is a god's place it is like heaven the food is also good 
the people are very simple and this place is blessed with executes this beauty all the surroundings whether it is the weather or whether it is the purity of the nature you will find each and everything over there the landscapes are marvelous i can still feel the freshness of the air over there i even heard the people there saying that people who have been with long ailments even if they visit kashmir once and they stayed there for 15 days or a month they also happen to recover from those dreadful ailments this is the beauty of kashmir a purity that lies there i really look forward to going there because i want to experience that mental that physical and that spiritual and moral freedom once again all set to go here you go table topic master amazing thank you so much can we have a huge round of applause for uh, toast master jolly sharma i thought that for the last 2 minutes you were already there the way you express it i think you were already there in kashmir i wish you get to visit the place very soon and for my next topic now i'm deliberately picking the next toast master sorry about that we have just karan singh taking the next topic and yes it is deliberate i'm going to share my screen it's a reaction it's a face reaction which we tell our kids not to do but i'm telling you and asking you rather to share in the incident when did you do it last why and when okay there you go jaskaran expression that you had is very similar to this when you did you do this last why and how jaskaran think since the lockdown started we have been on video calls and sometimes we get scolded on these video calls we always have a chance to go and mute switch off our camera and do this when your boss is scolding you and you don't like something that someone is saying just switch off your camera you can do it right now like sonika cha has switched off her camera if she doesn't like my speech she can do this it's a very easy and simple expression to use whenever you want and especially in the video calls you can do it if you're in a physical meeting you just have to go and leave that place and just curse the person whose speech you don't like right now there's no problem you all can switch off your cameras and do it right now if you don't like my speech i have been doing it again and again if you ask me when was the last time i did it i have done it so many times that i don't even remember i keep doing it out of disappointment i keep doing it out of celebration also i do it on every friday when i finish my office this is what i do when i don't like the people other people's jokes when i go for an open mic and uh, i also go for improvisations whenever such a thing happens that i don't like something i will just take out my tongue and keep it in that direction thank you so much for giving this topic to me over okay, to you okay thank you so much jaskaran singh for bringing this light humor in the room so that we can do i can do my i can't do my eyes but my tongue definitely rolls like this maybe president can decide to take a picture of our club like this and we can put it on our dp but okay that's not what my intention was i hope you had fun in the table topic session i would like to check with our timer if we still have the time for one more topic or we are good to close we are 2 minutes ahead of schedule so we have time okay so we have the time and i would like to give it to the table or the timer only because she is the one who's left with the table topic So, would you like to take the topic next, Anisha? Sure, Madam Toastmaster. Okay. So, since I had only five in my kitty, I would like to just take one second to find another topic for you. Okay. Cool. I've got it. Would you like to go ahead? And you don't have a choice. Sorry about that. So, I'm going to share my screen. And here you go. Your topic. Anisha is with friends you feel like you are a superpower with your friends you feel like that you are a superpower Anisha Gupta the life doesn't give us choices madam topic master didn't give me madam topic master did not give me a choice but we do have a choice when we get to choose certain kind of people 
it's not special someone or just a cranky friends and when i choose these friends i choose them for not for myself but for the company that they give me and when i choose these friends and when i realize that oh i did make the right choice or oh did i make the right choice is she really my friend oh that person that is so notorious did i really make the right choice of making him my friend well i don't know if i made the right choice or not but when i am in their company i feel like i did when i am in their company i feel like i am having some kind of superpower the superpower of choice or the superpower of living life the way i could the way to my fullest in this virtual world well that's not happening the way it should be happening i'm not able to get to meet my friends i mostly see humans in 2d structure rather than 3d structure but that doesn't stop me from enjoying the time that i get to spend with my friends whether it's video calls the way we do it whether it's just those memes that i keep on sending throughout the day to my friends or keep on receiving them and that reminds me i made the choice of having good friends and they made the choice of making me feel like i am the superwoman of my life thank you for that lovely topic madam topic master amazing thank you so much superwoman of our professional speakers community the madam vp ed who's struggling to get the role players and the get the speakers and put on the agenda thank you for bringing to this super power into the mold of the choices i hope everyone enjoyed their topics i hope you got to get a good time and thank you so much for the timers to master raj mehta and anisha gupta for helping me stick on the time over to you madam to master of the day thank you dtm hani and for such a wonderful session this was a really lively and fun filled session which uh, invigorated our senses and with this i think uh, let me just conclude with you of the freedom uh, that we were uh, we wanted to talk about the ethical and moral freedom it is nothing but uh, i think ethical freedom is something which uh, wherein moral choices without which moral choices are impossible to make and free will is essential absolutely for the well being of not a person only but for the society as well for all the people in the society to be free it is essential that we have the good moral choices to be made by each and every person and we should also be making it ethically we should respect each other's boundaries we also know that the society does not progress if people are not given the freedom of the choice freedom of expression freedom to talk about the things they want to talk on so society's progression depends on freedom there are advantages as well as disadvantages of having freedom getting the freedom to make the choices helps you to define your destiny if you do not get freedom then you don't get the choice to define your own destiny you don't have anyone to help you or you are not able to progress the way you want this cripples you so with this i would now like to end my part but before that let me just share with all of you a quote from nelson mandela that is for to be free is not merely to cast off one's chains but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others and now let's move to the next part of the session that is the general evaluation wherein we today have the general evaluator of the day is post master sonika she is a communication professional at renew power which is india's largest renewable energy company 
she holds a bachelor degree in information technology and masters in management and liberal arts she has earlier been a president of toastmasters club of new delhi and her hobbies includes reading and discovering great content and listening to podcast today she is here with us as a general evaluator and with her is the tag team as well so now i request sonika to take over the session from here onwards over to you toastmaster sonika thank you toastmaster jolly that was a wonderful session and a wonderful role played out the mod yeah beginning with the uh, general evaluation section firstly i'll call all the three speakers to seek evaluation from the audience then i will ask the supplementary role players to present their report and thereafter one by one i will evaluate everyone uh, which includes uh, team mod the table topics and the report of the supplementary role players so calling the first speaker of the day toast master just karan yes he is there i invite you to uh, seek evaluation for your speech from the audience go ahead wait i seek evaluation for my speech right yes yes from your like am i supposed to give evaluation to myself no no, no. all okay. of us the other people will give you who heard you you have to listen to us <laughs> yeah that's okay that's yeah okay. Just so we can, you have carte blanche to ask your evaluation from anyone. You can call names and ask. Uh, call oh, that's how it happens. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. I give a chance to everyone one by one. So let's go with alphabetical order. And uh, yeah, I mean, Le, uh, Anisha. I think A is the first. Anisha, yes. Thank you, Dostmaster Jaskaran, and uh, thank you. It was a pleasure to see you at our meeting today. A, especially at that humor in the table topic. But we are talking about your speech. Your speech. Right up on the on the very important event of Kargil War that is going that we are going to commemorate tomorrow as an anniversary. Uh, on your speech, I would I have been able to observe some points on different uh, segments, uh, particularly your voice quality and your body language. I would say in terms of your voice quality and expression, I could constantly hear listen to a suspenseful voice. especially when you were just uh, sharing those grave facts those grave incidents that happened so it really suited to the to the tone to the mood of the speech but uh, i also have a recommendation where where you can improve is that uh, it also had narrative tone so maybe if you can use some kind of whisper to make it more suspenseful is uh, is a suggestion and uh, yeah all the best for your further speeches i pass on to the next person in alphabetical order okay sometime i forget the alphabetical order so here i am uh just karan beyond the facts beyond your strong voice beyond the perfect timing the day to give the speech i would like to add that the goosebumps i got the tears in my eyes and emotion that you invoke in me who's not an anti national person but still who's not even aware that tomorrow is kargil vijay divas who's not even aware how this kargil war started who's not even aware of what's going on in india right now to me that was your victory to me that was the amazing job that you have done because i personally believe that every speech should be able to invoke and connect the audience with emotion so that's my commendation with all that you brought for me the message which you put in the end very nicely and very strongly that we are not here to join the army we are here to conquer each day against the ego and the other battles that we are fighting and we need to have our vijay divas i think that was the strongest effort of your speech um uh, i would have only one recommendation since you already have a very strong voice i would challenge you to work on it to bring it more stronger to work on to work on it more strongly and how do you do that uh, when you are actually putting the facts into the place and when you when there are certain moments which are very um very 
sad facts that you are giving, the emotion that you're giving, bring in the fluctuation in the voice. There has to be a higher note, there has to be a lower note. I think that's the only thing that I would like to recommend. And you are already blessed with a wonderful, strong, husky voice. Bring it to power with your fluctuation so that you bring that element to stronger connect. That's me as an evaluator. Over to the next one, Jolly Sharma. Jaskaran, I think you did a fabulous job today, especially with regard to the emotional connect. The content was really nice and it was beautifully portrayed out. I was especially able to connect that at that moment when you said that uh, the bullets are still, uh, you know, they're marked, they're marked out in that film. Now. And uh, I was able to relate it out because when I visited uh, Amritsar, right, and I visited Jalian Wala Bab, so there are still I saw those bullets uh, carved out over there and I could really connect with the emotions that you were trying to portray. It was a very emotional speech for me as well. And uh, kudos to you on that part, especially on the introduction part. I think I missed out that probably. Uh, so that's my bad. And your ending was also superb, the way you ended it, the message that you gave. Overall, it was a really beautiful speech. Thank you for sharing your insights. Next. I guess I would give up because of the red card. Madam so, General Valvito, can we move ahead? Yes, yes, because of paucity of time, we'll not uh, take much uh, time. So calling on the next speaker of the day, DTM Hani Khanduja, I invite you to seek evaluation from us. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so let's start it the other way around. I think uh, Toastmaster Raj got to help me with that first. Opposite in the alphabetical order. So guys, please take a, take a note. I'm bad at uh, Raj Mehta. Thank you, Annie, for calling me for the evaluation. I like the way the portion of the book was read. The smoothness, the... Uh, the the pulses in the voice, the ups and downs, and the impress uh, impression that uh, these words and your voice left on me were really impressive. I you your question was that did this speech arise interest in me for reading that book? Frankly speaking, I do not read books about witches and uh, you know things like that. I read books about uh, like the magic of thinking big or the, the kite runner and all that. So I, 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 I would say that this reading did not arise any interest in me for reading that particular book, which you are referring to. But otherwise your reading was effective I, I, and I really enjoyed it. Thank you, over, thank you. I over to together. Mukesh Thakur. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, honey. It was interesting uh, to know about the new book uh, by the author. One book I have read, uh, and uh, you have just uh, uh, rose uh, uh, eagerness to read the next book. So thank you very much for bringing that up. My suggestion or uh, recommendation is uh, that. Uh, I have not uh, heard many book reviews. Uh, still, I could not find it as a book review because uh, most of the part uh, in your speech was covered in reading of uh, that book. Mm -hmm. And I would uh, like to know a summary from you in your own words uh, so that I could know the author and about the context of the book and how that book can relate to myself or, or any member of the audience. Second thing, uh, the podcast thing that you had uh, created, uh, you tried to bring some uh, effects by uh, turning your video off. I did not find it uh, relating. So when I, at the last you were reading uh, with your video on, I could relate to you more than 
in the previous term so that is uh, just my recommendation otherwise uh, you took care of uh, uh, bringing emotions even if you are writing uh, if, if, even if you are uh, reading the book so great experience i got to know various new things today thank you okay thank you uh, i think the next in queue would be jaskaran or uh, jaskaran jolly so both of you can so i heard the review but uh, i want to restate the point that uh, the summarization process of the review should have been in strictly your own language because right now it did sound a bit robotic to me because it was like read from the book and uh, the summary can be of the sort in which you have to give strictly your own point of view like if i talk about the alchemist i'd say that uh, if you read the alchemist uh, i'll summarize it like this that it is not the treasure that you can just dig it from your house and get it out you have to go through a whole journey and struggle and uh, fight with life and death and then come back to the point where the treasure lies so this is how you you can summarize something uh, by by giving your own point of view about the book and that that book review in 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 that book review you can also tell what were the things that you did not like about the book because uh, mm. that is also in your hands just like you give commendation and recommendations that happens in the book review as well uh, otherwise the voice was very clear i liked it but uh, i think that uh, it needs to be researched upon that how you give your own strictly your own point of view in a book review that's my point thank you Thank, thank you so much, Jaskaran. That was helpful, Jolly. I would agree on uh, Jaskaran's most patient Raj. And just to add on that, I think at times it sounded very monotonous. Hmm. Probably you would uh, look forward in uh, enhancing your voice modulation and uh, recommend. Though I have heard uh, many of the uh, stories in. Hindi, right? Uh, especially in the radios, right? In FM, right? The way they narrate it out, it's very beautiful. So probably try to incur incorporate those elements. It will, I think, and your voice is very clear. That is your strength. So try to incorporate incorporate those elements, and definitely you will do wonders. Honey, thank you, thank you, Jolly. So uh, we have the red card going up. Anisha, can you do it in the buffer time? Like the thirty second that we have. Are you on mute? Yes, handling multiple things. Right. Ah, uh, distinguished Toastmaster Hani Khantuja. Two quick uh, recommendations. The okay, I actually felt like uh, it was a narrative behind the curtains, the way a stage play started. Ah, uh, so it it was nice to me that concept. Ah, uh, your voice expression. Uh, when you saying about notes like love and when Meadows and Brida are talking, it was low, so it was like empathetic and sensitive, which was good. On the recommendations, I would say talking about book review, you spent four minutes on talking about the book. You're reading the book out, and probably a minute or two on the book review, your opinion. So balancing that out when it's a book review, it felt more to me as a book reading out. a uh, book reading session rather than a book review also in terms of voice expression maybe you can hear more of audio books if you really want to try, try that out and play with the voice notes thank you thank you so much uh, with that i would like to conclude and i would really request the general evaluator and madam auto master konika jha to share your recommendations and commendations on a personal tag if possible thank you and over to you general evaluator sure um, yeah now calling the next speak and last speaker of the day toastmaster anisha uh, please come forward and seek your evaluation yeah go ahead toastmaster sonika please share your evaluation sorry yeah, please share your feedback on oh. my speech okay okay yeah just yeah as always anisha i have been a fan of yours because of one particular reason that there are actually no crutch words whenever you're expressing you are strong you are uh, calibrated to a point where you give good analysis and reasons so starting with your peace from india journey to how it connects with the democratic style and how you gave examples to connect with what you are who you are in a very particular way so i think that was good 
uh, just one recommend uh, recommendation, but that's general and not particular to this speech. I think sometimes I feel there is a sense of little strictness in your voice. I would recommend you to be a little more fluid. Uh, just that. I mean, it could be very personal as I sense it, but it could. Uh, you can totally ignore it if you could find it uh, not good. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. And I would like to see it from distinguished Toastmaster Mukesh Thakur. Thank you, Anisha. Uh, it was great to listen to you. Uh, I have only one recommendation, and that is very. And that may not be relevant because uh, I, as an idea audience, I could re not relate to your opening and uh, closing message of the entire speech. Otherwise, the entire speech was uh, thoroughly interesting. I kept uh, listening to your various uh, uh, ups and downs and uh, the stories. Everything was interesting. It had a great structure and it was, uh, oh, one second, I have the report that it down. It was a smooth delivery. So one of one of the things that I have noted uh, as a speaker in you that over every speech you are your speech de delivery is uh, getting a smoother and a smoother. So kudos to all of that. And I always love your structure. I always love your content. And all the best for next speeches. Thank you for those words. Before moving to further evaluation, I just want to remind the audience here that this was from project two, le sorry, level two, project one, understanding your leadership style. Uh, and my primary purpose was understanding my primary leadership style and uh, discuss those leadership styles with you. Uh, so was that point be uh, evident or not? You can comment on that. Thank you. And I would ask from Toastmaster and guest, just current. Well, I, I would say it was a great speech because I'm a very bad listener. If I'm listening to someone, that means the person must have done a good job to get the attention of the audience. That was a plus point. There was a point when the speaker showed a thermometer and uh, the thermometer had a set of points against all the values. It was difficult as a reader to see on what basis, what those quantified values assigned against each uh, particular parameter because uh, all the values were came up uh, all of a sudden, it was difficult to digest that what those values mean and how you calculated them. And uh, giving a high value temperature to, lead to democracy, I did not understand why would the temperature go high when the democracy is high. At that point, I would say on, on the content part, especially, if the temperature is high, I would say it is uh, for autocracy, aut autocracy and uh, dictatorship, the temperature goes high. Uh, democracy is a very good kind of leadership, so the temperature should be low for that. So that temperature analysis could have been in a different direction altogether in a more positive way for democracy because it is one of the best forms of leadership. And high temperature for democracy was not really a good point as per my subjective analysis. I'm sorry about that. Uh, overall, it was a great speech and congratulations to you that you were a part of Teach for India, a great place for volunteers in a non-government organization. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Over to you. Thank you for that quick yet analytical review. I would just want to comment that uh, I took temperature as as just uh, maybe like a number line and I'm thinking number line would be a better than taking temperature as an analogy. Uh, distinguished Toastmaster Hani Khantuja. Okay, going quick, I would definitely echo what Jaskaran said that the first thing when you showed the temp uh, thermometer, the first thing that appeared in my head was temperature, the hotness and the authority and autocratic kind of thing should be going up not, and not democracy. Maybe yes, you can use the scale to uh, show that that would be better. But yes, that's completely subjective. That's how I felt when I saw the thermometer. Uh, but yes, the Thermometer and your journey together make it very uh, together actually made it very intriguing for the audience to see the leadership style and definitely I was all in for it because I've not done it so this was something as you could make the audience curious that's one commendation that I have uh, one, only one recommendation that I have that I wish you could have picked up any particular instance any particular short uh relatable story from your life where you actually saw these differentiating element of your leadership the entire journey was definitely a good add-on 
but any particular striking experience where your democracy came into picture or the other point where you scored lower, I think that could have added more impact. Thank you. Thank you. And due to a paucity of time, I pass back to general, general evaluator. And I would love to hear other thoughts offline. Yeah, I think we should proceed. And now it's time when I call the three supplementary players one by one. So we can begin the grammarian of the day, DTM Mukesh Thakur. Please present your report. Thank you very much, Madam General Evaluator. I would just like to share my screen. Starting with the word of the day, I had given you card plans to use the word of the day. And still, I am still to hear from any one of you. I would just like to hear a few uses in the remaining part of uh, the meeting. I had used it once and uh, recently I just used it twice. Coming to the areas of improvement, there were very little cases that I could have uh, noticed uh, throughout the meeting. Uh, for example, uh, the word that was chosen, I chose, that is incorrect word of the word choose it should have been I chose or I have chosen. So it was a pronunciation mistake. The second uh, instance was uh, the freedom my parents gave me. The freedom, It will, uh, the word the will not come with freedom. It would be freedom my parents gave to me. Uh, next thing was career was pronounced as carrier. And uh, this mistake I always find uh, in many of uh, the speakers. Carrier is for uh, carrying the goods and career is our uh, aspirations. Next thing, uh, the word, uh, the one sentence where uh, it was mentioned, elder age, you are growing up. And it could have been just simplified as, as you get elder. Next, uh, incorrect usage was kanka was pronounced as concure. So just a little bit of correction in the pronunciation. Second thing, pushing the button was used by one of the speakers and it was in the wrong context. Pushing the button means if someone is uh, making you hurt, uh, if someone is hurting your feeling, then, then it is called the pushing the button. In this context, it was used as an authoritative leader. Hence uh, the uh, use of uh, the context was incorrect for pushing the button because was pronounced as because although it is also a parallelly correct usage uh, but i would recommend them to use uh, uh, as i hear it ideally because now next thing is people needs people will always need subject verb agreement uh, uh, uses and that means a disagreement Circumstances was once uh, pronounced incorrect, incorrectly. It was circumstances. I, I cannot pronounce it uh, in that uh, incorrect way. Next thing was the people are good. Again, people, uh, the word will not come before people. Similarly, the landscapes. If it is plural, then the article the will not come. Now coming to the good uses, uh, there are many good uses. I could notice uh, a few. I could notice a few. The uh, one is uh, by DTM Raj Mehta breaking a leg uh, by just Kiran. Truce uh, India recaptured its position. Terrain unexplainable war. Hani Khanduja tradition of the sun of the sun. Anisha Gupta inquisitive one. Notorious, I see humans in 2D structure and not in 3D structure. And Sonika Jha, I was creating a ripple effect and calibrated in one of her sentences that was used beautifully. That was all from the grammarian side. And uh, thank you for uh, making the efforts of grammarian less, uh, less painful today. And all the best for the next meeting. Thank you so much, DTM. Okay, now I call upon the R counter of the day, DTM Raj Mehta.
Also, you are mute. Not audible. Rasul, you are not audible. Mm, yeah. Am I audible now? Yes. Okay. It was a good day at the account office. I do not know about my hours and arms and rep reputations, so maybe somebody would tell me if uh, somebody had uh, taken note of it. As far as the other Toastmasters are concerned, so I made a note of uh, each and every word. So wherever I could, uh, like uh, Jolly Sharma um, used what, what, whichever, but yes, and so many times, and, and so's, and you know once, maybe once, right, twice, I think twice. She's in the habit of using the uh, filler word so and and. And I think they, this is where she has to work, uh, work on. Anikandusa used uh, his, her, and and yes, people are, some people are in the habit of using the word and yes. I think that must be avoided. And uh, Mukesh Shakur repeated the word read, read, then he repeated the, uh, the price, so, and, uh, and that is, was, was somewhat not completed. Anisha used yes, well, like, well, again, yes, well. So is, it, so she is in the habit of using the help, uh, filler words, yes and well. Uh, so she has to work on that. Sonika used well, yes, yeah. And she repeated the word, I joined, I joined. So that, that is where she needs to improve. Jessica used yes, but, and, 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 and. So just can you need to work on removing of and from your speeches. Otherwise, uh, yeah, these are the uh, pauses. Uh, Jolie Sharma took the uh, pauses at five places. Anik Khanduja was flawless, sorry, flawless. And Mukesh Shakur uh, had four pauses and Anish, Anisha Gutta was good. And Sonika was flawless and Jessica was also flawless. And uh, what, as far as the repetitions are concerned, though Jolie had three, Mukesh Shakur had three, this I already reported, and Anisha had three, and that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, DTM Raj. Yes, the report, and again I said yes, sorry for that. Uh, I'll mind, I'll mind before using that word again. So we are done with the evaluation from our uh, supplementary role players, and it's now my time to do a comprehensive evaluation. Uh, I can see Toastmaster Nisha raising her hand. Do you want to say something? I must report. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. How I forgot. Uh, Toastmaster Nisha, your report. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator for the day. And I'm sharing my screen to present the report for the day. I'm just noting down the time used by our counter is just three minutes. And uh, we are mostly red today. Uh, the temperature is too high. Let's see why. Okay, uh, I couldn't note the Sergeant and Rans and President's timing because I started out late. Uh, Toastmaster of the day was uh, took. So this is the breakup of the timing that Toastmaster of the day has taken. In I see that the introduction for the first speaker was while it was well under time, uh, for the second and the third speaker, it was it overshot by 34 seconds and 19 seconds. Uh, recommendation for the Toastmaster of the day too is would be to prepare for shorter, under one minute introductions rather than uh, reading out everything. Uh, the theme was covered at various places uh, for, for um, I'm sorry, this one has gone wrong. It was, it was noted in a different format, but uh, I believe this was four minutes and this was two minutes and a half, two and a half minutes. Uh, so about seven minutes have, and a minute over here, so eight minutes have been taken for theme. This can be reduced, especially um, while between the speeches and the table topic section. That's where we overshot. Okay, 
Uh, then the speakers, uh, the speak, speaker number two, Honey, was overshot by one minute, uh, by 50 seconds, and after the red zone. Uh, speaker one and speaker speaker one was in the yellow zone. Speaker three, Anisha, was in the red zone, but still under qualification. So if if it was to this in terms of disqualification, uh, to say speaker two was well over time. Um, in terms of table topic section, speaker one was five minutes above time uh, over for a possibility of disqualification. The timer also apologizes because the timing cards were not shown properly at that time. Other speakers were under qualification time and well ended speaking. And uh, the evaluation for all speakers are uh, shot above five minutes. So this can be taken in a note and maybe the moderator of the evaluation section, which is general evaluator can, uh, can uh, announce that it's for five minutes and people audience members can take a note that to give one minute one recommendation or two recommendation and commendation points each right now i have taken three minute 20 seconds already so i'll stop over here and uh, we should be at 5 48 so we are three minutes behind schedule back to you general evaluator good well anisha thank you for making us being cognizant about time and i think now i should begin with the relay uh, just to cover up with the time that I have in my hand, beginning with uh, the Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Jolly Sharma. Uh, Jolly, is, is she there? Yes, yes, you're there. I can see you. Uh, Jolly, a, a very interesting concept foretold. Uh, why I say interesting? Because to me, freedom is an abstract word, also with, which has a meaning and a perspective as well, right? To different people, freedom can mean different things. But you chose the concept of storytelling and of, and of proving and providing a very substantial example and stating a point, what does it mean to you? And then you generalize it for other people, telling, okay, these are the examples which were very much relatable. As you unfolded the three types of freedom, I could understand that, okay, this is the place where I feel what is social freedom, right? What is ethical freedom? So for me, it also gave me some food for thought to think. Not all your examples could have been relatable to me, but there were instances I felt that, wow, I did not know this. And it was a magical moment I, as I discovered through your role, what the, what does freedom, I mean, what could freedom have? Uh, we can have it in different forms. So I would say good attempt at that. And you were calm, composed, and you were not rushing. As, uh, but as indicated by the timers, you should make your content a little bit concise. That is advised. And uh, I feel that uh, you were very clear with what you wanted to communicate. And I think you did that brilliantly. So good job on that. Coming to uh, table topic section and table topic master DTM Honey Khanduja. Honey, uh, honestly, this was the first time I had the treat to see beautiful and creative images and letting people know, oh, this is your topic and now you have to speak. Because usually it is that a table topic master comes up with a uh, text written or maybe this is a slide showing the text. But the image, when added to the text, they add more creativity and you think aloud. It was, it was a good approach to make this section a little interesting. So rather than trying out something very absurd and you know something different, oh, I'll do this, that, you had a simple yet effective approach. And going uh, for the evaluation of speakers, table topic speakers, for DTM, Mukesh Thakur, uh, lovely uh, Mukesh, it was really nice to hear your personal experience. And uh, thankfully, you had an example where you read two books and how they changed your life. So that was good. Second, it was me. I will not evaluate myself. You, you guys can do it. Third was DTM Raj Mehta. I think there was some confusion. You took the literal meaning of that idiom. Well, that idiom break a leg is a sign of good luck. Whenever an artist or a performer goes on stage, it said that go break a leg. You know, that's wishing good luck. So here I would say that if you do not know the meaning or you are just closely trying to chase the meaning of that sentence, there's no harm in asking your table topic master because it's not a competition right here, right now. 
sick and ask what does it mean and come up with better ideas then it was uh, toastmaster jolly again uh, jolly you come out as a very calm and composed speak calm and composed speaker you you took us to the place where actually you, you would like to work from which was kashmir and you gave good a nice uh, imagery i would rather replace the word and say vivid imagery of the place and why do you like it giving reasons for it so that was good brilliant then it was toastmaster just karan well uh, everything was good and uh, i think of all the speakers he differentiated his impromptu speech with a punch of humor like how we like how he quoted me in the instant that Uh, maybe sonika does not like my speech that's why her video is off so that's that's what uh, i call the ability to uh, crack jokes in the present time or maybe it's very uh, cunning of you to notice things and then you know, just come up with the idea so brilliant good job on that toastmaster nisha quite good uh, nothing nothing majorly bad or where i need to recommend it was good honestly it was nice you were expressive and you were clear in your thoughts you understood the topic well okay then coming to the supplementary role players starting with the grammar of the day, uh, grammar of the day dtm mukesh thakur one recommendation i will actually begin with the recommendation because that is the point that was hurting me since the beginning that never choose a word or a phrase that is of a different origin where people cannot actually use it right uh, i have to see a skin carte blanche blanche okay so even if i want to use it word i cannot use it because it's not a regular english word for me and maybe difficult for me to remember it right i know you tried to innovate something but come up with an easier word come up with a relatable word that is easy for anyone to use and uh, at two places where you were evaluating the sentence i am correcting you so the sentence could have been as you get older and not as you get elder and there was a there was a place where you said it's a mistake uh, the landscapes you said it should be landscapes La the landscapes is also fine landscape does have a plural form so the is the right article then our count uh, rest it was good you also gave the good usage of the words then coming to the our counter dtm raj uh, very nice and precise on the fact that where people went wrong where they can improve and especially that you discovered a pattern like you you said and 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 yes yes and ye so you had you had a pattern that people could discover that how they speak when they speak and then coming finally to the timer of the day toastmaster anisha i think timer timer's role is not that creative or great that they can bring something new but be yeah you were on point you had a detailed description on the sheet of how much i mean uh, uh, how much people uh, time people took to perform their roles in which bracket they fell in which segment they felt how they finished so yeah that that's that's all i think i expect from a timer to present uh no matter how many uh, times you can say be be precise or try to finish early i think they people take their own sweet time to finish things but yes we all should be mindful of time it's it's almost 6 now and i'm going to vanish before that <laughs> yeah the meeting was really nice uh the sergeant at arms uh the president's opening was great we, we started on time and let's finish on time right now over to you uh president ttm raj mehta thank you general evaluator toastmaster sonika jha how was the meeting let us first ask from our guest jaskaran jaskaran how did you like the meeting it was a great meeting i was asking for a speech slot in this uh, club for a very long time finally i got it and uh, uh, it was it was good to deliver a speech over here i uh, particularly liked the the evaluation of uh, the general evaluator it was really precise very mature and has a great command over the language uh thank you for having me here and i really like uh, the round robin approach of uh, providing evaluations that is something that we don't follow and uh, we should do it to so that multiple people can give their subjective feedback and uh, like a lot more people can give their point of view and it's going to benefit the speaker so that's all from my side thank you so much 
Over to you. Just, Karan, just one more point. Where do you think we can improve? I think that uh, this is a very famous club. There should be a little more number of people over here. Uh, like, I know all these people, uh, a lot of DTMs are over here and famous people are here. So I expected a little more number of people to attend the meeting. So all these people in the club are helping the others uh, out in the world to develop more clubs and develop their personality. They should attend the meeting of their own club as well. That's what my point is. That's it. Thank you, Jaskaran. Uh, you should be feeling uh, lucky today because we are less in people. Sorry, uh, I mean to say our members are less in people. That's why you could get the opportunity of giving a speech here. Otherwise, otherwise we do not, uh, uh, we do not guess, we do not, do not uh, have uh, speeches from guests. We can have other roles, but not just speeches. Thank you very much. But your point was well taken that there were less number of people and we shall be working on it. Members, how was the meeting? It was good. Informative. It was good. Informative, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So I think the most of the credit goes to the Toastmasters of the day. Yes. Toastmaster Jolly. Jolly, Shalom. So now my, my story. I had told you a story in the beginning. What was so special in that story? What was the USP of the story? More than the story, it was an array of questions. So it was an inquisitive style of... Um, Every sentence was having interrogative marks. Yes. The whole story was built on questions. And this is another way of giving speech. Though it is very difficult, frankly speaking, I was, I, was, I was not able to memorize it. I was you know, reading it from the screen because I could not you know, memorize the thing. So many questions, yeah. And so are we good to work more to make our meetings better? Yeah. Let's make sure that we are there in our next meeting as well. And uh, would anybody like to say anything? Before I say, uh, you know. Uh, any particular reason we didn't go YouTube live today? It is not YouTube, it is uh, cloud. Okay, so nowadays we are not recording on YouTube, we are recording on cloud and then uh, Rupinder or VPPR uh, shall you know, break each and every section into you know, subsections and then we can uh, we view, uh, sorry, we can watch those you know, section, subsections uh, this according, this according to our choice. Okay, okay, makes sense. Uh, I was away for last two weeks, I think, so I missed that. Yeah, okay. maybe. Maybe Jolly will be contacting you soon for the, you know, fine thing. <laughs> fine. Really enjoyed the meeting today, distinguished Toastmaster Raj. And I believe that even when we were less in number and we have one external uh, Toastmaster, uh, and some of us were playing double roles, I think there was double typical, up... double typical role. <laughs> so I guess, and I believe that it was utmost quality, and uh, in every role, and uh, there was. There was no sign that the enthusiasm or the devotion to the role or the responsibility, it was less. So I believe that quality, sorry, quantity, quality matters over quantity. So, yeah. uh, as they say, you learn when you learn uh, when you are you know lacking a lot of things. Since we were less in numbers and I had to do the intermediate thing, I could learn a lot you know, from that role as well. So that is an, this addition of knowledge as far as the role of the technology is concerned for me. Yeah, very point. right, uh, DTM Raj. I think this helps us to take up things at a very ad hoc basis. And all this taking up multiple roles. But in no way, I'm it's challenging me to grow and take up roles even, even at my office also. Multiple things handling at one go. And the best thing about uh, this meeting was there were 100% video turn on at most of the time. Yes. It is rare. Thank you, Mukesh. And yeah. Now that, and now that Jaskaran so has we spoken, what can we... Anyone of us? Uh, I think there's some that. Cool. Can I go ahead? Or is Raj... But it doesn't mean in, in no way I'm saying that we, sh we are good uh, when we are less in number. We should be more and more. More and more members should be there in the meeting. 
so that uh, they can also enjoy so yes. shall we call it, shall we call it a day yeah i just i would just like to invite uh, jaskaran to come in our more meetings and uh, if it's it suits to then also think about our membership yeah, so it's good to have maybe you maybe we can in, invite him for an improv as well uh, mukesh he's really good at it to prop up uh, probably the power talk plot can be converted right. into an improv right, plot right, right. for jaskaran and he can be our uh, speaker in the limelight right i i do improv jams uh, very often in which uh, i engage people in improvisation activities in which you have to think on the spot and act so if you ever want to have that session i can do it for you whenever you want thank you so much for having me here jaskaran mukesh uh, mukesh sir is our vp membership and anisha gupta is our vp education they both shall be contacting you for both the thing that is membership as well as your improv session thank you so much sir looking forward to both the things as soon as possible sir cheers yes thank you thank you everyone thank so, you as we thank say you. thank you bye bye take so care in, bye. The, in, in the words in the words of mukesh thakur these are not my words the our next meeting starts now now, now. thank you tada bye bye, bye.